Hey, Nerdy Sports Fan here. We're talking Week 8 NFL action. And um, this one we got Tampa Bay going to see Tennessee. Man, this is going to suck. So, um, Tampa's literally the worst defense in the league. Um, they're okay against the run. Great. Doesn't matter. If anybody can pass whenever they want to against you, that's all they're going to do. So, yeah, you, part of your run defense being good is because you can stop the running back all right. Part of it is just because your pass defense is so bad, nobody's even trying to run against you. So, um, this is the week where that's not going to matter. All right? Your options are uh, Marcus Mariota, or if they decide to bench him, Ryan Tannehill. That's who you're going against. With quite possibly the worst wide receiving core in the league. Yeah. I think you'll be okay, Tampa fans. I do. Um, Tennessee's got a very tough defense. Very tough defense. Um, they're only giving up something like 16 points a game. Um, their offense is only just barely outpacing that at um, just under 18 points a game. Whereas Tampa Bay scores almost 30 points a game. They score like 28 and change. Um, but they're giving up over 30 points a game. Yeah. Again, though, that's because of the passing defense. And they're going up against a team that doesn't know how to pass the ball. So that's going to be interesting. Inept passing game against inept passing defense. Which one's worse? Yeah, that's what the popcorn's out for in this game. Both teams are really bad. Yay, right? Um, this game does not matter in the playoff standings. It matters for pride, okay? Um, I don't know. Uh, Mike Vrabel's a good, really, really good coach. Bruce Arians, really, really good coach. Uh, these guys know what they're doing. Um, personnel is the issue here, okay? Um, good coaching doesn't matter if you don't have the talent. Good talent doesn't matter if they don't have good direction. So you need both. And these teams are the rare circumstance where the coach really knows what he's doing, but the players don't know how to execute what the coach is telling them to do. So it, they got good defense in Tennessee. That's Vrabel's, you know, bread and butter. He was a linebacker in the league. Um, but yeah, I, I, he hasn't had as good an offensive coaching this year because his offensive coordinator is now coaching um, for the Packers. And he's the head coach of the Packers. So his replacement, not as good. Weird. Um, yeah, it, it's a bad game. Okay? Uh, don't, don't ask too much of me here. Um, you have Godwin, who's going to do very, very well because he's the only receiver that seems to have chemistry with Jameis Winston. Uh, Winston is a roller coaster. Okay, one week he's an all pro, the next week he's a chump. But for whatever reason, every single instance, regardless of how he's playing, Godwin gets his. So make sure he's in your lineup every week. He's a must start every single week. I don't care where you put him. One, two, three, it doesn't matter. He's going to put up at worst wide receiver two numbers, at best, top end wide receiver one numbers. He can go off for multiple touchdowns almost any week because you don't know what you're going to get with Winston, but you know that he's going to go to Godwin, okay? Um, their best running back so far has been uh, Ronald Jones, but it's still a really muddy backfield there. Don't touch it with your fantasy starts. You've got better, ro you don't even roster these guys, okay? You've got better things to do with your roster spots, like a backup defense or a backup tight end, because we're in the middle of the bye week season. So, um, yeah, a anybody from Tampa that's not Chris Godwin or Mike Evans probably shouldn't be anywhere near your roster right now. Um, Cameron Brayton and O.J. Howard have had flashes of okayness, but neither one's great. So, um Tampa definitely needs some roster turnover to get some traction, and, and I hope Bruce Arians can do that in this coming offseason 
uh, because head coaches typically only get two to three years these days uh, to show that they're worth something. And, you know, I don't think Arians' track record as a great head coach for other teams is going to matter too much if he chucks up a couple of bad seasons in a row. So, same for Vrabel, by the way. His coaching tenure might end because he's not had good players. So, um, yeah, uh, everybody who's looking for good coaching, one of these guys might end up getting the axe way sooner than they're supposed to, and you're going to luck into a very good coach because, you know, front offices need somebody to blame. So anyways, um, don't start anybody on either team unless it's Chris Godwin for Tampa or Derrick Henry for Tennessee. Those are the focal points of both offenses, and they're the only people you can bank on with bad teams, is the focal point of the offense. So um, bench everyone else. If you want to take a flyer on Mike Evans, he, he doesn't get the kind of targets that Godwin does um, consistently. But, you know, now and again, he can break it. He's a very, very talented guy. Um, you want to take a flyer on Winston because your quarterback's uh, in a bye week? Sure, maybe. You, you know, um, this might be his good week. But otherwise, it's, yeah, everything else is bad. Um, this game doesn't have a line on it. Oh, well, I'm sorry, no. Two and a half points favored, uh, Tennessee. That's because they're at home. Okay, that, that's it. They're at home, so they, they, they get a bump. Um, I don't see it. I don't see it. I, I got Tampa winning this one. Um, they just have more talent on the team. And, and anytime you're going against a team that has question marks at quarterback, whether or not somebody's going to be benched, chances are you have the advantage. So Tampa fans, you guys are going to win this one. I don't think you're going to win it easy because Tennessee is a very, very tough team, but you're going to win. Um, so obviously I'd take Tampa against the spread. So, um, hit up the rest of my videos because, you know, other teams are good and worth talking about and, um, hit up Nerdy Sports Fan Weekly for more in-depth analysis of some recent NFL news.